Hello and welcome to The Flow. Today on Cycling with Sully, we are comparing the latest models of the Caliber Boss Nut and the Polygon Vander T7. The bike boom that started in 2020 and continues to this day has gotten more people on bikes. While this is a great thing, the demand for bikes and parts far outnumber the supply. As an effort to keep producing bikes, some manufacturers have started to get creative with where and how they are getting their bikes and parts. Recently, Polygon released the 2021 Vander models for pre-order exclusively from Bikes Online. For some very simplified quick background information, Polygon manufactures bikes for other companies, and when they had extra room in their production, they took a frame that they made for somebody else and put their name on it. That was how they were able to produce the Vander. For those who have an eagle eye for bikes, you might have noticed that the Vander's frame looks quite similar to the Caliber Boss Nut. Yup, they're the same frame, but they come from different brands, each with slightly different components. Stick around to learn the differences and similarities between the Caliber Boss Nut and the Polygon Vander T7. First, we have Purpose. Their purpose is to provide a modern full suspension mountain bike well below $2,000. I have more about one of the bike's purposes at the end. Next, we have the frames, or should I say frame? As I mentioned before, they both have identical frames. The frame is constructed with 6061 aluminum. The rear suspension has 130 millimeters of travel and uses a Fox linkage design, which can be found on many of Polygon's full suspension mountain bikes. Although there is a through axle in the rear, it is the older 12 by 142 millimeter non-boost size. Moving on to the geometry on the medium frame size, it has a 66 degree head tube angle, a 74.5 degree seat post angle, along with a 72.1 degree effective seat post angle, a 438 millimeter chain stay, and a 442 millimeter frame reach. The frame's geometry is not crazy in any way, but the numbers do align with most other modern trail bikes. Usually, I would start to separate the components of each bike, but in this case, the Bossnut and Vander also share many components. Starting with suspension, they are both running RockShox suspension front and rear, with Recon RL solo air forks with 130mm of travel and non-boost 15 by 100 mm through axles along with a Monarch R rear air shock with adjustable rebound but no lockout. Not being able to lock out the rear may be a big deal to some people, but honestly, I've never used it on my bike. Driving the bikes forward, they're equipped with SRAM SX-12 speed drivetrains with an 11 to 50 tooth cassette that offers plenty of range and gears to choose from. Sticking with the SRAM theme, they both have SRAM Level T two-piston hydraulic brakes with an 180mm rotor in the front and a 160mm rotor in the rear. The tubeless compatible WTB ST I29 TCS 2.0 rims are found on each bike. Another thing to note, the 27.5 inch wheels are the only option on both of these bikes. While this is only a minor difference, the Boss Nut has formula hubs compared to the Vander's unbranded hubs. The tires are one of the few things that separate these bikes. The Boss Nut has a 2.3 inch wide WTB Vigilante Comp tire in the front and a 2.25 inch wide WTB Trail Boss Comp tire in the rear. The Vander has a 2.35 inch wide Schwalbe Hans Damp tire in the front and a 2.25 inch wide Schwalbe Knobby Nick tire in the rear. Unfortunately, none of the tires that come on these bikes are tubeless compatible. Although the parts of the cockpit come from different brands, they both have 780mm wide bars with a 30mm rise, a 45mm stem and a 31.8mm clamp, as well as a 30.9mm seat post. I would have liked to see a dropper post, but for an extra $200, you can get the Vander with a dropper post and a different frame color. For price, this is a little iffy, since I don't think the Caliber Boss Nut is available anymore, 
but according to Pinkbike, it costs around $1,400, and the Polygon Vander T7 is available for pre-order at $1,699. When coming up with my conclusion, I had trouble making a decision of which bike is the best. I would have said that the Caliber Boss Nut is the best because it offers almost everything that the Polygon Vander has, also while being $300 less. But because the Caliber Boss Nut can't be purchased at the time, the Polygon Vander T7 is better because you actually can get it. It seems like the Polygon Vander's purpose is to get an affordable mountain bike into the hands of riders during the bike shortage. I believe that Polygon can make their bike more expensive than the Caliber Boss Nut because of the convenience and availability Polygon is offering with the Vander. If you found this video helpful, or even just entertaining, please consider subscribing to help Cycling with Sully grow.